So episode number 78 of Quarantiki is live with a live studio audience from folks that have <laughs> never seen an episode before. But we invited them over because, well, they're drinking pals of ours. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, they bring us things like scotch and say, here, try this. And we go, what the heck is this? What was the, the one, the atomic... Nuclear... Some what was pasta that? Water. Thermonuclear pasta water was the name of uh, one of these scotches. And, and so they brought over this um, tiki bar delivery, single grain scotch whiskey, cast strength. It's a Highland. Ex bourbon barrel was the initial cast, final cast in an ex rum barrel. Oh, very nice. And I was just reading the tasting notes. A lush pay-in to beach holidays, silly fruit hats, drinks with umbrellas, and all the coconuts you can carry. So we're going to have Terry come up and talk about like where this whiskey came from and what little he may know about this whiskey. Um, but we are first going to do a, a toast. And uh, our two guests this evening have never had a rum from Haiti before. And, well, we have a few rums from Haiti. We have the Providence. And we have a couple of clarins and that sort of thing. So I uh, thought what we would do is we would taste two different clarins. Um, one is the clarin Le Rocher, which is comes in this pretty box, which was sort of our introduction to clarins. Thank you, Kate Perry, not the singer. Different Kate Perry, brand ambassador for um, Habitation Velier that is responsible for bringing these to the U.S. And then some years later, they released a line of aged uh, clarins, and this is the Casimir, which is aged 29 months in sherry casks. And I was very careful to mark the glasses so that we could be able to tell which was in which, and then I poured them into the glasses and went, oh, right, I should be able to tell because, well, clear and sherry cask, right? You spend 29 months in sherry casks, you too will probably be a little darker and have some prune notes to you. So what I'm going to do is uh, have people come up and we can grab our little uh, tasters here. Go ahead and step behind it. If you want to be on camera, you don't have to be on camera. You know, reach in. What's up? <laughs> Over there we have Terry, who's going to talk to you about scotch <laughs> and later. later. And Emily here. Yes, so we have studio audience and, and my <laughs> wife who told me, hey, aren't you supposed to hit the go live button? Yeah. yeah. So, yep. Task mistress. Okay, so I would recommend that uh, each couple take one of each and then you guys can um, swap tastes. Do you want the aged or do you want the uh, unaged? Okay. Right. Okay. All right. So, cheers. 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 Cheers to good friends and um, hopefully someday making another Arbeg day. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe at our bag. Maybe at our bag, yes. Oh, there are plans, right? <laughs> They're notional, but there are definite plan, plans. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, we, we actually own part of the cast together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. But not from our bag. No. 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 Not far from our bag. <laughs> it's an island. Mm. Yep. So we do not drink just rum around here. <laughs> Yeah, the wood definitely comes through on the, on the sherry cask. I'm not I sure I would have picked it up as sherry, but I definitely... Right. No, no, yeah, I do. Now I do, as, as, I as the finish. First I get, hi, I've been in wood for two years. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like them both. I think for the, the, my the, memory of Clarin, I think the unaged. Right, and that is traditionally how Clarin is done. Is it is pulled off the still, there's no dilution. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you get definite vanilla notes off of the the unaged. It's nice. Unaged. Keith is commenting in the video. Is that a big deal? That's a big deal. He's I mean, not banned. That means he's not banned. <laughs> yeah. He's just reading Dr. Hearing and Dr. Hearing. <laughs> Maybe it's because I know something about the clarins and, and how they're made, but I get a sense picture of like this coming off of a decrepit still into a plastic bucket and then being <laughs> funneled into bottles. It's like, I can taste that. Yeah, yeah the plastic sort of like <laughs> yeah, a little, yeah, yeah. Right. 
So the only but, difference this was 29 months in Sherry. In Sherry, right. So there's a slight, um, because of the regional variation in the sugar canes and that sort of thing and the climate variation. So there's no two batches of Clarin are ever the same. Um, and also they're from two different distillers. Uh, the Clarin Rocher is way up on top of mountain where they don't actually grow sugar cane. So they have to pack the sugar cane or cane syrup up via mule because they, by law, they can't use vehicles to do it and still call it Clarin. Oh so um, basically what happens is they pull it from another distillery who transforms it into cane syrup. So they take the sugar cane juice and they boil it down a little bit, pack it on the mules, send it up, and then Rocher uh, ferments it in a process pretty akin to Jamaican pot still rums. And then it goes into a pot still and, and they distill it right out. And the uh, Roche, the, the Casimir is a different, it's a lowland, they're using their own sugar cane. So, um, the yes. La Rocher is 46.9, and really? the aged is 52.9. Well, I'll tell you how much of an effect the aging has on... So, we have some comments. Because I don't think that, that doesn't feel as hot to me as the, as the young. What David else? says it sounds like I may have to break out the single malt after we finish the daiquiris. <laughs> yeah, probably. They're on the boat. Uh, single malt is Corey Beckett. Ah, ah yes. nice. Yep. Uh, and Keith says I'm sipping tequila, but might switch to scotch for Terry. <laughs> okay. No, that's just don't do that. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that. We're, we're going to be doing those later in the, the evening. Ugh. You want one? Yeah. Want that one? Okay. So I, I have to say, I really appreciate the aged Clarion, but for me, Clarion is that unaged right off the still. Uh, that's that's Clarion to me. Um, I actually think that it probably could have done with less time in the cask because it's so woody and so sherry that I'm losing what I think is Clarion uh, oh, from I'm this. I'm sorry, they what? have several single malts on one. They do, but <laughs> if you open up their bar on the back left corner is the, where they keep the bottle of Cory Vecken. Cory Vecken. Uh, so speaking... I his Cory Vecken. <laughs> Emily would like the world to know that her dog is in fact named after that scotch, the, the Cory Vecken. Yeah. Or is it the other way around? So, several weeks, so it's good that we're talking about uh, David and Chris being on the boat because a couple of weeks back, we tried, I, I tried. Um, if it's a success, then we had a success. If it's a failure, then it's I failed. <laughs> uh, to do a drink in honor of their boat named Molly. And we tried to do, we, I tried to do something called the Molly High. Um, and it was fine, but it, it was just not up to what I wanted it to be. Um, so what we're gonna try and do is uh, do another variation, see if we can get something that I'm happier with. And then while I was looking at different ways of approaching the Molly High, uh, we ran across a drink called the Dead Man's Tale. And what a great name for a haunted tiki party, right? The Dead Man's Tale. So if this drink comes out, and it's it's got a lot of the same ingredients that the Molly High has in it. So if it comes out, we may just go with the Dead Man's Tale as one of the drinks for the haunted tiki party. And the, then there is uh, a drink called Across the Pacific, uh, done by a bartender down in Australia. And I'm going to switch up a couple of ingredients with that, and we're going to go with Below the Pacific, because that would be a, a Pacific Rim slash Cthulhu Riley reference there. So we could do that. And if that comes out, that may go on the Haunted Tiki menu. And then we have these guys. We have the, um, if we get there, we'll do the, the brain in a jar thing. Yeah, from here, you can't really see just how disgusting that looks, but <laughs> it really does. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty special. Okay, so the Molly High. What are we going to do for the Molly High? Um, I'm getting rid of ditching the apricot. I tried the apricot a couple of different ways. The apricot and the Mr. Black and the pineapple just not not working. The pineapple and the Mr. Black works. That's, that's a tried and true combination is the coffee and the pineapple. It shows up in a lot of different uh, classic tiki drinks. 
the black magic uh, from the Maikai as well. So we're going to keep that, but I'm going to play around with the sugar component uh, in particular, which is the usually it calls for simple syrup. Here we're going to add um, some baklava syrup. And we got this syrup through shaker and spoon. I don't even remember uh, which box it was. Probably the bourbon box would be my guess. Uh, every month shaker and spoon sends you a box. Uh, you have to go out and buy the alcohol, but they give you all of the ingredients necessary to make, I think it's it's either two or three um, drinks of each of three drinks. So um, it's it's really nice. Um, they don't, I mean, they give you everything you need to make the drink. So if it requires lime, there's going to be a lime there. If it requires Angostura bitters, there's going to be Angostura bitters. But they know that maybe they don't need to give you an entire bottle of Angostura bitters if you're making like three dashes in each cocktail. So they send you these really cute little bottles that are the, the little bitty bottles with Angostura bitters in them or other bitters. And I have found that one of the great things is that I can stick like three or four different of these little bottles with different types of bitters into my travel kit, my traveling bartending kit, and that way I have bitters with me and don't have to carry multiple big bottles of bitters with me. Wow, this is really leathery, this uh, this incense. It's very cool. I'm going to have to remember that. What what are we doing? Oh, that's the travel case. Yep. Ta-da! Travel case. It's too close to the camera, sorry. Okay, fine. I'll we're going to show off the travel case. It's in terrible condition at the moment. I was just going to show off the stickers. Oh, the stickers. The actual travel case. Work sucks. Stuff. Let's find a tiki bar right there. Yeah. We've got Tiki Cat over here. And... Black Lagoon Room. I'm the cabana boy. How can I help you? There's a, of course, there's a Lovecraft sticker across the top. Yeah, because we got to do that. Um, people supporting people. It's from People's Drug. Huh? Uh, the Monte Aldo uh, sticker is from the cast of a Monte Aldo from Horror and Clay, right? Stormcrow, which uh, did the Cthulhu mug that has the reservoir for dry ice in the head right. so that it's like. You get the smoky tendrils coming out through the eyes and stuff. Really kind of cool stuff. And Tiki Cat, sadly, no longer in business. But um, So this is my traveling bar kit. And, uh, you know, what I've got in here is just a smattering of bitters. I've got a muddler, a couple of different Hawthorne strainers, and a couple of, well, I've got a shaker, strainer, um, mini juicer. This thing's cool. Right? Here's a little juicer, right? a little plastic juicer, um, and a mixing pint, and I usually just grab one of my bar spoons and throw it in there. Um, it's a metal mixing pint. Too. It's a metal mixing pint, yeah, so it's not going to shatter on me. And then wherever we are, we just go buy some booze and make cocktails that way. Yep. Um, so, you know, even if you don't have a tiki bar around while on your business trip, you can make drinks in the evening, because why not? Why wouldn't you? Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to do half ounce of this baklava syrup. That requires having baklava a chicken. Baklava syrup was in the rye box. That's close. I was close. I was close. So half ounce. As always, I am starting with the sticky, thick ingredient first, because then I'm going to put in things like my citrus ingredients using the same jigger and help clear all of that out. So I'm going to go an ounce of lime juice. I have to be careful because I do, in fact, have the Rose's sweetened lime juice sitting out, and I really don't want to grab that instead because that would be nasty. There's a reason why that's out. I said it was nasty. There's something else on here that's nasty. Those little jars right over there. Yep, that's what I'm using. What? We, I heard some intake of breath from my wife. David What's, says, we have a Mount Gay flag we won't use. Know anyone that needs something like that for their tiki bar? A Mount Gay flag? Wow. Um, I don't know. Are, are, are we okay with flying gay colors? You think? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, that would be cool. Uh, I do, in fact, have some Mount Gay. Uh, there's a couple of bottles of Mount Gay down there. There's some Mount Gay XO. Um, and something else. I can't remember exactly what. Uh, so what else goes in here? Well, David and Chris were responsible for turning us on to Mr. Black coffee liqueur. And so that has to play a prominent ingredient in here. Right, so half ounce simple syrup, one ounce lime juice, one and a half ounces pineapple juice, 
half ounce Mr. Black. If you don't have Mr. Black, you can go ahead and use Kahlua. Um, if you want it to be less alcoholic, you could just use a cold brew coffee. That would probably get you most of the way to the, the flavor profile. Now here's where I would go with, here's where I went with the apricot. And I did, like I said, I don't think the apricot's working. So what I'm going to do is reach for something else, anything else, right? I'm gonna actually use the uh, Cuarenta y Tres, the liquor 43, um, Spanish liquor. Uh, it's got some spicy orange notes in it. And um, I don't know, I just really like liquor 43. I'm forever in the debt of uh, Nate over at the Vermilion Bar for introducing me to this stuff. I saw it on the back bar and went, what is that? And he's like, what do you mean you've never had liquor 43 here? And then put it in two or three cocktails. And I went, I must own some of this. And so, yeah, I do. All right, uh, only a quarter ounce though. We're not gonna go very much of this. Do, 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 quarter ounce. It's, it's a spicy accent. I don't want it to take over the cocktail. Um, one ounce light rum. Uh, in the last time we did this, I used the Baku. And here I want something with a little more flavor to it. So I'm going to go with the Hamilton um, White Stash. Hamilton White Stash. I think I just went too insipid with the white rum. Mind you, I like the Baku White Rum for mixing drinks. But in this case, it just didn't provide anything else to it. It was like, eh, it was there. So ounce. And then one and a half ounces of an aged, aggressive Jamaican rum. And here we're going to use the pot steel black from Hamilton as well. The other reason for using the white stash was uh, the Hamilton seemed to go well together. So that's what we're doing. I knew I was going to use the pot steel black, so I wanted a complimentary white rum. Three quarters. Three quarters. I'm really impressed with this incense. It really does smell like leather. That's very cool. If you happen to like the scent of leather, I guess. Some of us do. Lake Candle Company, which one? Uncle Al's? Uncle Al's, yep. Which, now that I think of it, Uncle Al's brings to mind other things. Um, when I was younger, there was a game put out by... Steve Jackson games called Car Wars, and you equipped your cars with various forms of weaponry and defenses and took them up against each other in an arena or on the roads and, and fought. Why, is this, why does this remind me of Uncle Al's? Well, because Uncle Al's they published like a, a little catalog or pamphlet of things you could buy for your car. So it was Uncle Al's Auto Shop, right? It was kind of kind of clever and cute and that's why Uncle Al's. Okay, we're going to shake this. Then we're just going to pour this unstrained directly into a Mai Tai glass. Double rock glass, whatever you want to call it. Nice foamy head on it because we're mixing with pineapple juice. Oh, you know what I could do? Uh, nope, we'll hold off on that. Uh, duck down here, we need one of those. And I think those, there we go. We're gonna use an archipelago glass. So archipelago, can't see that. Archipelago, there we go. From the Tiki Bar in DC. And then this is an Appleton Estate. You're not gonna be able to see that. An Appleton Estate. Uh, so Appleton rum, my tie glass. And there we go. We need some mint in that. David, this is your cue, I believe. <laughs> David seems to have... Uh, seems to to want to point out that the mint is being spanked when I do this so yeah, thought we'd just let him says a tiki travel kit I feel like the first time I ever saw a pepper mill what in the tarnation <laughs> <laughs> oh Keith 
You should know better than to use the word tarnation. It just reinforces things. <laughs> and we're gonna put a little more mint in the other one because there's no mint in that one. So I've got to so just reach in here. Why do you spank the mint? Expressing the oil. So, I mean, you get uh, some scent of the mint if you just hold it up, but if you bruise the, the leaves of the mint, you actually get a lot more aroma. Besides, it's fun, and, you know, it makes David giggle, so we do it. All right, so here we go. This one's going to our studio audience. This is for Terry and Emily. Right there. And uh, so we have these nifty little trays here, like, uh-huh. This is uh, not a garage sale find. We actually spent yesterday hitting various Goodwill thrift store type things. Oh, oh yeah, that's much better. I mean, I didn't taste it before, but... Oh, <laughs> that's much better. Do you want a sip before it goes away? Uh, can I have another sip? Yeah, yeah you, you can have another sip. It seems to me like this is gonna require uh, more time spent on the garnish, though. Because you need a Molly distinctive garnish. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But... No, I like that. Well, that's... Yeah, that's good. That's yummy. That is yummy. I think we may be on to something here, David and Chris. We, we may have come up with the drink for your boat. I'll leave it up to you guys to come up with the garnish. How's that? Um, Amanda recently got a traveling case as well to take her shaker and spoon stuff. And make drinks at game night. Oh yeah, sounds like a plan. So that's the last I'm going to see of that drink. David said he did not start the drink a bit at each spank. He merely maintains the tradition. Well, that's okay. It is good to have some people maintaining a tradition. Um, thoughts from the yeah. studio audience? I get the coffee. I get there's a little... Terry, do you... I, I, was, I get it, but it's, it's a lot more subtle than it's very subtle. It's my stuff. It's yeah, uh, I, I was... If you thought it was, like, subtle, and you're, like, only getting a hint of it, I'd be, like, a little disappointed. I think it's a little more prominent than that, but it certainly doesn't take over the cocktail. Mm -hmm. No, I think it helps. I think it helps. And the... the when I it made definitely it... Definitely taste the pineapple. Yeah. Definitely taste the Mr. Black. Re howdy, yay, we're back. Molly Crew is back. <laughs> yay. I don't know, Facebook, Verizon, whatever. We're gonna have to do some investigating and maybe do a few more broadcasts during the week or something and see if we can figure out what's going on. So what did we do? We we did um, we did a toast. We actually think we may have solved the Molly High. So we've got a, we've got a good drink there. And we were talking about this bottle here, this bottle of scotch. Well, it's the, technically not scotch. It's, it's single it's, grain scotch whiskey. Okay, all right. This is what it says. But it, it is a single grain rather than um, It's aged 20 years. It is. Well, okay, we have two questions. We have two questions. One, where were you? Where'd you what <laughs> happened to you? Uh, David said, what is in the baklava syrup? Good question. Uh, the baklava syrup... Oh, thanks, David. Demonstrating how old I am. <laughs> Organic wildflower honey, Elmhurst unsweetened milked walnuts, filtered water and walnuts, roasted walnuts, rose water, orange blossom water, and citric acid. So essentially, this is a walnut orgeat with a little bit of honey added to it. Which is good to know, because, well, I can make a walnut, walnut, walnut orgeat pretty easily. And uh, all the other ingredients I have as well. So, hmm. If we decide we like this stuff, which apparently we didn't like it so much in the rye drink, because we didn't use very much of it, um, I can make more of that. In fact, I have a great big bag of walnuts upstairs. And what was I doing? I don't know. Tasting glass. That's ah. what I was doing. Like, why is there an empty glass in front of me? That should not happen. 
And question two, is the 43 available in most Virginia ABCs? The 43 is available in most, if not all, ABC stores, uh, barring usual delivery problems, right? It is commonly distributed. So, so what can you tell me about this? Okay, Eric? so it's from uh, the distillery, it's Loch Lomond Distillery. Okay, Loch right, so Lomond is where? In Scotland. Thank you. <laughs> it's that's all I can tell you. I'm I'm guessing it's in the Highlands. It's in the Highlands. <laughs> okay. So um, and again, so it's a single grain whiskey. So the single refers to the distillery. So right. all the, mm -hmm. the, the the liquid comes from one distillery. Mm -hmm. uh, the grain has to do with the mash bill. So typically with a Scotch, it's going to be 100% malted barley. Right. And so um, that's why single malt. Right. Right. So, so this is a single is grain. Single grain. So they don't have to be 100%. Uh, barley, right? Like, oh, it can be corn. So just like be... single grain, they don't. They just mean. Well, single is the distillery. So okay. whatever is in there came from one distillery. Right. Not that there's one grain. Okay. Right. Right. So 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 it's single distillery, um, and in this and case, grain. I, I don't know exactly. And so so what these guys do is they buy the cask. Uh huh. You know, of, the you know, Scotch malt whiskey. Twenty five hundred people get right. together and uh -huh. buy the cask. Uh -huh. Then they bottle it, and you know, then they make it available to us, and you know, we can actually acquire it. Um, and you have basically. Okay, like, they need the name of the, the again. Uh, the, the name of the scotch. Oh yes. Is Tiki Bar Delivery Society Cask Number G nine point four sixty two percent sixty two point one percent alcohol. Cast strength. Yep. Cast strength, and this was distilled in two thousand, July of two thousand. So, Lock Bowman is the distillery. Right, Lock Bowman is the distillery, and that G9 is mm -hmm. the distillery. Mm -hmm. Dot four is the fourth cast from that distillery. G at all was for grain, because they actually also mm -hmm. do their single malt size available as well. Um, now, I don't know what was actually in that cask, but mm -hmm. Lock Bowman actually makes other grain whiskeys available, mm -hmm. and their grain whiskeys, by and large, tend to be 100% barley. So I'm a little confused why they don't just sell it as single malt, So unless they don't malt it. Okay. Right. Right. So if they don't malt it, they have to sell it yep. as grain, yep. Yep. right? So that, I mean, that's probably that would be a good guess, yeah. right? It's yeah. just not malted. But essentially, you know, you or get it's the not little, all malted, right? They could malt part of it. Part of it, part. Right. Okay. Yeah. But with the society, you get the little blurb that you read, um, right? And 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 you get the distillery number and the cask number, and that's kind of it. And you then get, it's then you it's get, you get information about like aging, right? So you knew that this what's was on the bottom, right? You knew that this was aged in rum casks, yes. right? And I think that you do get a sense of the rum mm -hmm. comes Absolutely. through in this, but it's also spent. Well, it didn't spend all twenty years in there. It was finished in in rum casks, and we have no idea how old or how long it's spent in in the final casking. I mean, that's not at all uncommon, right? That you have a spirit that is aged in a primary cask and then it is finished in something, something else, else for like ten percent of its aging time or something like that. Um, I would also venture to say this is probably continentally aged. So the cask is, most is refilled aged at the Trinidad rum right. barrels. Right. So uh, as opposed to so like the vast majority of the rums around the world no. are in fact uh, island no. aged. So they're <laughs> because they're produced in the Caribbean and therefore they're aged in the Caribbean. Oh, I see. What you're saying. Hugely I different see what you're climate, saying. Right? Right, right? So you know the difference between aging something in Scotland or aging okay. something you know yeah. in France. But that being said, you know, mm -hmm. Scotland's a very uh, different place. Different yes. parts of Scotland are very different. So you get like a, a, an island distillery and aging um, on site for an island distillery is going to produce a very different yeah. whiskey than, for instance, Loch Lomond would, a highland whiskey that's actually you know, inland away from the sea. So, right. Which is part of the reason why the same thing with rums yeah. is, you know, a, a distillery in Nicaragua, you know, even if it's sitting at essentially the same latitude as an island, uh, you know, the aging there inland is mm -hmm. going to be very different than the right. aging, you know, on some island where you can, you know, pick up a rock from wherever the barrel is and huck it into the ocean. Right? right. It's like wow, difference, uh, difference affects the casks. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it affects the amount of angel share, how much the cask breathes, um, and all of that. So you get uh, you get generally considered a faster aging in the islands. Right. Um, and which is why you tend to not see something aged for 20 years because here's my cask and here's what I have the bottle right yeah. at the end of that. That's that's not so good. Stark found it was a Trinidad rum cask. Oh, okay. Trinidad. So very likely that it's an Angostura uh, cask. 
in that case. Uh, Angostura being, the, I think, the largest Trinidad distillery, if I remember right. I think that's correct. All right, uh, so that's actually tasty. Uh, yeah. When you it, don't have hot peppers first. When I don't have hot peppers first, yeah. <laughs> it reminds me, uh, part of the reason that I say I can pull out the rum notes from the casking is it reminds me of other spirits I've had that have been rum cast. So I've got a couple of ryes back there that have been rum cast. I've got a blended scotch that was rum cast. And I was like, that's the flavor of a different spirit that's been sitting in a rum cask, right? right? right. It's, it's distinctive. Um, it doesn't taste like rum, but... Right. So one thing that'd be interesting, so I normally with a cask strength whiskey, mm -hmm. I'll add a little water, mm -hmm. you know, take yeah. a little bit of heat off. That tends to also open up the whiskey. I added water to this, and I did not like it as much. Huh. So you might try a little. I'd be curious to see if you if you, what you saw any difference if you added some water. If you have a way of adding a couple drops. I do have ways of adding a couple of drops. The question is, do I have water? <laughs> uh, where have the my oh, droppers? You have no water. Oh, there's a dropper right there. Yes, please. We'll just reach in here and I'll look. Here. Wait. Oh, I'm an idiot. What? Because there's a great big water glass right here. So uh, one, two. That's so, like oh, it's only half ounce. Yeah, it's, it's less than a half ounce yeah. pour, right? Breaks up the surface tension, brings the esters to the front, right? Wow, I lose the nose completely. Absolutely. What? Yeah, That's it. weird. It just killed it. It's like, wait, wait, there was this pleasant nose, and now it's, and it's gone. gone, and it's not because of the insects. No. That's well. I had the it, same experience. It wipes it out. Yep. It does. Okay, um, this is quite tasty. Don't add water to this. No, do not do that. <laughs> um, it tastes hotter with water added to it. I get alcohol. Mm, I get burn where I didn't get that ahead of time. Here, you can right. finish that. Anybody want this? <laughs> How bizarre, right? You would think adding a little water would help dilute it down. Um, that's just that's just crazy. All right, I got to get moving because the dead man's tail has like a gazillion ingredients in it. So I got to get moving on this. I'm sorry. All right, so um, this starts with a quarter ounce of either cinnamon or, in my case, a spiced syrup, which has cinnamon in it, but not exclusively. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Little little bit of the hiccups there after the whew, wow that thing like burns after you add water to it that's so wrong that should not happen it should come with a disclaimer do not add water to this oh it was so tasty beforehand wow and I'm usually a fan of of adding a little bit of water especially to things that are cast strength but usually it's a good thing that was so here's here's the deal I guess you know if it's imminently drinkable straight up at cast strength probably don't add water to it, right? I'm gonna go with a half ounce of lemon juice here for this one. So this is a difference from the um, the Molly High in that we're using a citrus base that is lemon juice instead of uh, lime. We're gonna go with pineapple juice. We're gonna cut back to the pineapple juice a little bit. We're going three quarters of an ounce here. Um, you know, I should be making two of these, shouldn't I? Yep, I should. So let's stop that. All right. Okay, so now we're caught up. These are basic. These are the same. Yes. Yep, they're the same. Okay. Uh, spice syrup, lemon juice, uh, pineapple juice, and falernum. Falernum is next, right? So we're going to use um, John D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum because I can get it and because I've been lazy and have not yet gotten around to making my own falernum. It's it's simple. It just it's an infusion with rum and limes and cloves and other things, and I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Someday, not going there. Okay, so there's the quarter ounce of the falernum. It is pretty spicy stuff, so you don't want to add too much falernum. It'll take over the cocktail. Um, let's see, pineapple, falernum, lemon, Benedictine. Here's a weird ingredient. Why Benedictine? We need an herbal component to this. Um, or at least so the recipe calls for. I, I like Benedictine. Um, I sometimes swap out Benedictine and chartreuse, like a yellow chartreuse. 
um, it does, I mean, it just, it adds those herbal components that you don't want to add a gin to the cocktail. You can add these, these components using something like that. Um, some floral elements to the Benedictine as well. Banana liqueur. Okay, now we're just getting crazy. So, okay, fine. Quarter ounce banana liqueur. We're going to use Tempest Fugit banana liqueur because it's really good. <laughs> there you go. It's really good. Uh, I do have some Giffords. It says, when you said Flarenum, I thought you were talking about S-L-I-R-M. Slurm? Slurm? <laughs> I have no idea. Is that a, is that a, uh, um, oh, what is the TV show? Um, with Leela and the express delivery through the universe. Um, God, what is it? Uh, Bender the robot. Um, Futurama. Futurama, yeah, yeah. Because Slurm is a drink in Futurama, right? S L U R M, Slurm. Okay. Banana liqueur. Uh, we're going back to Mr. Black. Yep, which is Futurama. A, so there we go. Yay, I still have some nerd cred. <laughs> some, not a lot. See, I mean, the pineapple and the Mr. Black, uh, some sort of spicy herbal component, all of that reminds me of the Molly High. Um, but this is just taking this several levels beyond because I'm only halfway through the ingredients list at this point. Um, so an ounce of aged Jamaican rum. Um, I'm going to reach for the Dr. Bird just because I really like the Dr. Bird. Um, Keith says you're a man of the world. Amanda's <laughs> calling out that this is the second Nina Simone song tonight, and she loves it. <laughs> yeah, so th this was the, the latest addition to the Tiki Mix was um, with all the surf rock that's on there and the exotica, uh, little soft jazz, and I went, you know, how about a little Nina in here? And so I've got a Pandora station that used Nina Simone as a seed, and so we get a bunch of Nina and her compatriots in there, and I think it just really works well in the mix. Um, and then we need a dark rum. I, I, don't, I don't know what dark rum, I mean, it, all of these rums are dark rums. I don't know what that means, so I'm going to go with, hmm... Sure, why not? We'll go over here. We're going to reach up for the uh, the brand new Hamilton Zombie Mix. Uh, blend of rums. It's dark. <laughs> Should be fine, right? Uh, half ounce. Half ounce of this. It always irks me when somebody says dark rum. And I'm like, so I could use, you know, a Hamden Estate aged 12 years and pull all the funk in the world. Or I could use... Oh, I don't know, an Eldorado 12, in which case I'm getting these smooth, sugary vanilla notes out of it with a hint of orange. W what do you want from the dark rum? So when I don't know, I'll just go with a blend, right? <laughs> and go, there you go. Um, at least they didn't say overproof, in which case, you know, reach, that would give me more to go on, because then I could reach for the, like, the Lemon Heart or the Hamilton 151 or something along those lines. Addicting banana liqueur, Mr. Black, Jamaican age, dark rum, and then we go to the spice component. Okay, so two dashes, Angostura bitters. All right, so that's easy enough. Two dashes. And then we have two dashes of sassafras bitters. And I, oh, go, oh, thank goodness. All right, wait, nope, that's the wrong one. Oh no. Are my sassafras bitters upstairs? My sassafras bitters might be upstairs. Do you need an emergency run? I might. I might need an emergency run upstairs. <laughs> Do to... we go to commercial? Hi. Well, the sassafras bitters that I have are in fact produced by Woodford Reserve. And the reason I thought that I didn't have to go upstairs to get my uh, Woodford Reserve sassafras bitters is because I also have their Spiced Cherry Bitters, also from Woodford Reserve. And while I think these are terribly yummy bitters, I don't think they're going to add the same components that the Sassafras sort of root beery component uh, will do. So hopefully the Woodford Reserve Sassafras Bitters will be coming back down sometime soon. So, so in which case I can, you... I can play with my brain here. Why would you not use a, a lower quality bitters? Why not? Why would you only use the high-quality Woodford Reserve bitters? 
Because Woodford Reserve is the only one I know that makes the Sassafras bitters. Brought to you by Woodford Reserve. Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> Are you angling so that I can try and get sponsorship through Woodford Reserve? <laughs> it's like, you know, if Woodford Reserve started. <laughs> Away. Woodford Reserve. <laughs> For those that like bitters to be bitter. No. <laughs> For those people embittered by the world, it's time for Woodford Reserve bitters. <laughs> They're bitters. They're bitter. They're bitter. Um, does require, well, I'm going to move on while she's looking for those bitters. And we are going to add the dash of absinthe to these that it requires. So there's a dash there. And a dash there. Because, yes, I keep absinthe in a dasher bottle on my bar. Don't don't you? I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> Last ingredient, besides the ice, is the sassafras bitters. So hopefully they're there somewhere. They're not upstairs. Oh, no. They're not upstairs. Um, um, okay. Because my wife is smarter than I am and found that I actually had these sassafras <laughs> bitters on the bar down yeah, here. But you so, got the commercial in, so it's all good. <laughs> Just wanted to get a little more exercise in you know, on the day. Keith didn't know that the handsome boy Corey was named after whiskey. The Corey Brecken is his registered name, yep. <laughs> there we go, two dashes, sassafra uh, sassafras and sorghum bitters. Sorghum, does anybody know what sorghum is? Corn? It's yeah. corn? I don't know. Yeah, I, know. I, it's a different I, kind of grain. I have no idea. I thought I thought it was a different kind of grain, but I'm like, I'm, I've never heard of anybody like malto sorghum or anything. You know? um, okay, so there we go. We've got two dead man's tails. Uh, we're supposed to shake this with some crushed ice and some cubed ice. I know I said shake this with some crushed ice, but I also said also cubed ice. Actually... I'm sure that there are plenty of grains in the world for which the best thing you can do with that grain is distill it. Don't you think? <laughs> All right, shaky, shaky. Nice and cold, nice and cold. All right. We are going to pour this into some newly acquired glassware. Ooh. Because I have been trying to find these sort of snifter glasses that you find being used for all sorts of tiki drinks. And I finally found them at a thrift store. Uh, after many, many hunts. Many thrift stores we went through. Now, see, this drink, this drink is one of those where it just cries out to be put in a tiki mug. A little more crushed ice to this to make this a little prettier. Right. I think that's a little better. Yep. And then, how are we going to garnish this? Oh, I think what we'll do is we're going to lay uh, some cherries in this. So I need a pick. What kind of pick can I use? Hmm. What is this? This looks like a pick. I wonder where this pick is from. Hun, do you know where this pick is from? That is from Dizzy Diva. Is it? You know, maybe we should do a shout out to Dizzy Diva because she makes great picks. She does. I will link in the uh, one, two, one, comments. Two. Now, I will let my studio audience know that... Um, Wow, that's way too big a pick for this drink. <laughs> well, fortunately, she makes smaller picks. <laughs> so we can make use of those. Yeah, uh, I will let the, you guys know that uh, these cherries have been soaking in a combination of rum and brandy and sugar and uh, a not inconsiderably alcoholic set of cherries. So be a little careful. They're pretty damn potent. I mean, they're not as potent as those blasted red peppers you brought this evening. <laughs> Our studio audience brought us butter chicken for this evening's dinner, and it was quite tasty. 
But they decided that, you know, here, we're going to bring you some peppers from our garden so you can kick up the flavor of this if you wish. And, well, I was brave and tried them, or tried one. Whoa! How tall did you say your pepper tree was? Like five, six feet. It's six, tall. Six foot tall pepper tree producing little red buttons of death. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, we're going to go with... Uh, how about this? We're going to go back to Surfside Sips. We're going to use our little rainbow straws here. Uh, by the way, uh, tomorrow, Monday, amongst other things like Indigenous People's Day and Columbus Day, is also, it just happens to fall on this day, is National Coming Out Day. So there you go. All right, so there we have it. This is the Dead Man's Tale. Um, I, why not? Let's reach in. That cocktail orchid, right? Because that'll be pretty. Yeah, there we go. Cocktail orchid. Cocktail orchid. Go in. Oh, there you go. wanted to know if they're habanero. habanero. No, they're they are not. Chinese hot peppers. Little itty bitty Chinese hot peppers. They're small and potent. So, okay, little little known story. Um, when I was growing up on Guam, one of the things the elementary kids used to do was challenge each other to eating hot peppers, and it was it was the equivalent of like schoolyard bullying, right? You know, okay, who's who's you know big enough and man enough to eat these hot peppers and. Some of them were exactly the kind of pepper that we got this evening with the butter chicken. They're just these tiny little bright red and oh my gosh, so hot, so, so hot. And of course, you know, the, you know, we're going to school with all the, the native kids who are just raised on these peppers and they're just like, <laughs> I'm like, jalapenos are too hot for me and these things are just killing me. All right, so there we go. We have the Dead Man's Tail, fully garnished with cocktail orchid and mint. There we go. As you would suspect from having twice as many ingredients in it as the, the Molly High, there's a lot more complexity here. That's really well balanced, though. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take another sip of this because I also have a hunch this is the last time I'll see this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Emily, do you want to take this back to yeah. uh, the table? Thank yeah. you. Uh, that one is the one that I was okay. quaffing. What do you think of those glasses? Don't those glasses uh -huh. look nice? Yeah. Those are nice. Oh, actually, oh, we got we got three of these guys, so I can I have multiple serving trays. It is so much I, easier, by the way, to hand a tray to someone than trying to hand cocktail glasses and that sort of thing. It really is. I mentioned the uh, new ruby red uh, straws from Surfside Sips. What Surfside yes. Sips has a new color of straws? And that we had ordered ours, and Amanda has <laughs> also ordered some. Like them. Like them. How are we gonna get that, Mr. Black? I think it really, I really like that. Um, we should do a, take a tasting of the Mr. Black alongside, you know, Kahlua and a couple of other of the coffee liqueurs. We even have some homemade Kahlua that we could put it up against. Um, okay, we did have a break today in the broadcast, and so we are running a little bit late. That and I'm just having too much fun talking and chatting. So I'm going to move right along to the next drink, which is the Below the Pacific, and try and knock this out relatively quickly. I am going to need somebody to wash out some mixing tins over there for me. Um, we're going to start with one and a half ounces of Orgeau, Orgeau, Orge, Orja, Orged, Orged, Orgiat. Orgiat is the only, absolutely, I know Orgiat is wrong. We're just not going to do that. Um, I'm going to make up some more for the party because this isn't going to cut it. <laughs> And yes, I've decided I like using a squeeze bottle to dispense the orgeau, orge, orgeat, whatever, um, as opposed to the bottle. Um, the only thing I don't like, you may have noticed, is it has this little dealy bopper thing that sits up on top. But when you shake it, 
you get some of the org shot up in here and so it drips on your hands and it's like this little eyeball like an angler fish that's dripping on your hand it's really kind of disgusting i mean it's not as disgusting as as, as this is but wow ton you want to hold this up and show them just how disgusting this is this brain in a jar Ew. Ew, something happened to that poor brain. All right, so uh, the sweet component is an ounce and a half of orgeat. The sour component is an ounce and a half of lime juice. So there's three quarters. I've got orgeat on the side of the jigger. I can tell because my finger is slipping off of it. The viscosity of that orgeat is just, it, it's kind of disgusting. But it's okay. It tastes really yummy. It does. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to go with an Amaro here. And um, the Amaro that I'm going to use is Nochino, which is a walnut infused liqueur, a walnut infused Amaro. We're going to go full ounce of that, which means this is going to have uh, some bitterness to it. It's okay. We like bitter, right? After a year and a half of quarantine, we like bitter. <laughs> We've gotten used to it. Um, two ounces of blended rum. And here I'm gonna go uh, uh, with a, a true blend. So this is Jamaica, Guyana, Java, Trinidad, Guatemala, Panama, and Barbados, the Banks Seven. All, the all of the things, right? All all the rum? things. Did it's you say, rum. is it rum? <laughs> yes, it's rum. rum, blended rum? Yes. Well, I, I missed with part of that, so and we're going to go right here. This is why we have bar mats, because otherwise this bamboo matting that's underneath here, it gets wet, and then bad things happen to it. We have to put it out under the sunlight and let it kill things. Uh, and then we need one ounce of something to apply a real backbone to this. So we need uh, one ounce of an overproof, a Jamaican overproof. And here, we're going to go with the traditional Jamaican overproof. Look, if you go to any tiki bar around the world, if you go into any bar that serves tiki drinks and does them reasonably well, and the drink calls for Jamaican overproof, chances are you're getting Smith & Cross in that. Uh, this is 57% alcohol, so it's not wildly overproof, but it's, it's, it's pretty strong. It's also widely available. It's very, very popular and isn't going to cost you an arm and a leg, and hence bars like using it. Yeah. I'm not going to fault them for that. It's also really tasty. So, I mean, you could use something like the OFTD or something, uh, or you know, go more expensive and use a Hamden or um, a Worthy Park, but you're then raising yourself up multiple price points. That's it. That's, that's what goes in here. Um, there's no bitters or anything except that I, hey, we're live again. <laughs> this was good, by the way. He says re re high. Re 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 high. Re -re -re -high. Re -re -re -high. Uh, okay. All right. So we did the below the Pacific and I don't know that anybody saw it, but, um, it was tasty. So that brings us only to one last cocktail. I, mean, I know we're totally going long, but we've had two breaks, and and I, and we've got we got these guys. That um, look, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna wander around here and, and see if I can. Look at me! I'm coming out from behind the bar. Can you see this? Yeah. Look, look at this. Look. Yeah, that's better. How's that? Is that? Yeah, it's totally disgusting, right? Nope. Go over here. There you go. Yeah. So this is the. Uh, Rain in a jar. That's a Lovecraftian reference. Um, those of you that read or, or know Lovecraft will know it. Um, these guys have been sitting around for a while, um, and I've actually lengthened the cocktail. Usually they're served in like a small shot glass. Uh, this is a drink based on sort of uh, things like the brain hemorrhage, which is a, just a goofy cocktail that uses like apricot brandy and um, has a squirt of um, Irish cream in it and it just kind of congeals in there and you add some grenadine and it looks like blood. This is a slightly different version. It's based off a, I think a drink called the Monkey Brains, um, but we're making it in slightly different ways in order to uh, to do the brain in a jar thing. 
and I've lengthened it with a little bit of um, San Pellegrino ginger beer so that it's not uh, just a shot. But that does mean that um, you can just sip this. Oh, man. It, it really, I mean, it is really kind of like you, you stuck some sort of animal brain in a jar with some formald for, formaldehyde and then you forgot about it for 50 years and you come back and you're like, oh, oh yeah, it doesn't, drink that. It doesn't preserve it forever, you know. Um, I, 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 I am reminded of the scene from the movie Better Off Dead where one of the characters is sitting in the science class and he's got this brain in a jar on his desk and he's like tapping at it and trying to get a reaction as if it's a fish or something. Uh, so I did this two different ways. I did it the classic way, which uses, uh, okay, semi-classic. It uses a, a vodka and a lime cordial and then drizzles the Irish cream into it and then adds some grenadine. Or in this case, I added, chug, 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 I added chug. a little fashionola. This one, I actually used rum um, <laughs> and some pretty good rum, actually. And you split the, instead of splitting, instead of using just the lime cordial, I split the lime cordial and some falernum. And then there's fashionola in this to give it the red color, uh, the ginger beer to lengthen it. And I hear people calling for me to chug it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm actually going to sip it. Uh, I've now actually forgotten which one has the rum and which one has the other. It makes a difference because the rum might actually be tasty. The other is using, Gwen, I hold you responsible for this. Where, where is it? Where, where is, oh, this. 99 whipped. Yeah. <laughs> Whipped cream liqueur at 49.5% alcohol. Because <coughs> it's good to be whipped. I, I don't know. I, I just, so, actually, let me open the other one and see if I can tell from scent alone which one. Oh, yeah, that's the whipped cream. <laughs> Clearly, that's the whipped cream. Okay, so we're going to not drink this whole thing. Because, again, I lengthened it. But I am going to take a sip out of this. I've already had several tastes of this kind of thing and they're really not bad at all other than the textural component which is like what is what is that and whose brains am i drinking right mm. that is truly gross we're so doing this for the haunted tiki party i gotta say with the ginger beer the ginger beer the lime coat so what do we got in here we've got Rose's sweetened lime juice, that's the lime cordial. We've got San Pellegrino ginger beer, which is actually a pretty Amanda wants one. <laughs> pretty good uh, high quality stuff there. We have um, where is it? Oh, the uh, Jonathan English's red fashionola. And then you know because I'm me, I'm using a high quality rum in here. I'm using probitas, which you know this is a this is a four square distillery rum. This is it's a way better rum than that drink actually deserves, but it also makes a difference. It's actually quite tasty. Um, I, got I, I should probably make this with uh, like some really funky, um, yeah. some absolutely funky Jamaican, and that would be really even worse. But what? It looks gross. It looks gross. It's supposed to look gross. It's a brain in a jar. It's supposed to look gross. The texture is weird. The texture is so weird. Oh, I can't cope with the texture. <laughs> the taste is okay, but I can't cope with the texture. See, I think I actually think the taste is is a little too sweet for my taste buds. <laughs> Emily's trying. You're gonna try the whipped cream it. one. Whatever, I'll try. It, I'll here's, so here's the whipped cream one. Yes. Amanda wants the whipped liqueur to go along with <laughs> like smack with some smile. I mean, it's not something I would order in a bar. The texture is really gross. The texture is so gross. Like, what? It's kind of this, like, gooey, plasticky kind of thing. Oh, oh. I mean, they look awesome for Halloween, but... Wait, what do I got here? What is this? What? Pop rocks is that? I wonder what this would do in this. <laughs> oh, my God. Because, you know, I've got pop rocks. They are, in fact, pop rocks. I rimmed a glass one time with the pop rocks, and that was, that was really cool. I don't know what this is going to do. 
explode. And probably. It's gonna be amazing. Or nothing. Those pop rocks are pretty old. <laughs> They're popping. They're popping. Okay. It's this is your brain. This is your brain on Pop Rocks. You can't see it behind the fashionola. Oh, can't see it behind the fashionola. There it is. Yeah, it's, it's oh, and it's it's crackling. It's it's like I don't know. It's not like a fireplace crackling. It's it's more like I left the butter in the pan too long. Burning crackling sound. Oh man. Oh. Yeah, we're doing it. We're going in. Terry, you're standing up. Nope, no. <laughs> Back away slowly. Put the jar down, pooch. Do not. Wow. It's forming a crust. <laughs> it is. It is. The pop rocks are forming a crust. No. Oh. There's, like this, there's this little raft of crackly red and green it's bits. It's like your epidermis and your dermal. <laughs> it's nature's way of like protecting you from that drink. Oh, man. It's like. You say, Two new. It's two saying, do more not new do this. From the uh, thrift store. Two new things from the thrift store. I have a plastic plant, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is. I spent what a dollar. Two dollars. Two dollars. Two dollars. Right. Wait, there's two fronds, right? So it's two fronds, one each, right? It's it's a plastic palm tree. Because I gotta have it, right? Plastic palm tree. Awesome. Oh, and the shell. You can't see the shell. The shell's here. Yep. You can't see it. Um. I'm sure if you were to go to some beach shop or some geology shop, you could get a shell or you can probably get them at Target, for goodness sake. But you're probably also paying like 15, 20 bucks for this. Whereas, you know, I can pick this up for at a thrift store. Right? I mean, this is not a small shell, right? This is this is a nice, it's a you know, pretty nice little nautilus -y shell thing, right? Uh, I think two bucks, three bucks, something like that. Yep. That's how we do it, you know? We we grab stuff that we see at thrift stores and that we think are cool and we add it to the bar and sometimes things stay, sometimes they don't. Kind of like our feed, sometimes it stays, sometimes it doesn't. Um, we've got... Just pointing out the pink flamingo in the back. Oh, did you not see the pink flamingo in the back? In Sitting inside the fruit stargate. Yes, so this is the, the wire stargate that we have here that we keep fruit in now. Um, I'm not sure that's going to stay. I'm really sure the, the pink flamingo is not going to stay. Um, this is intended actually as a drink uh, holder. So see, it's a cup holder, right? So you can take... It's in the pool. In the, yeah, pool. in the pool, right? So you can put your drink right in there, right? And it'll just float next to you. Or you can just send it around the pool, you know, in, in a better vanished time when you could actually trust the other human beings in the pool with you. But not anymore. Um, then they go, okay, go there. All right, um, I'm gonna do it, fine. Yep, bottoms up. Cheerio. <laughs> nice note. Well, it's still crackling. Oh my God. <laughs> Does it need bitters? No, it doesn't. Oh. First of all, the whipped cream liqueur is just vile. Um, I don't like it at all. When you add ginger to it <laughs> from the ginger beer, that is, whipped cream and ginger beer is not a good combination. <laughs> and then, then the texture hits you. Yeah, this, this kind of slimy texture sitting on the tongue. And Emily didn't get the full impact because now it's sitting there crackling on the tongue. <laughs> and you're going, nope. Mm. I don't know, have you seen that that commercial with the the gecko, you know, the Geico gecko and the dude, and he's just bought a house and he goes up to his attic and like, oh, it's always great fun seeing what the you know past owners have left you. And he turns on the light. And there's like these old mannequins and they're in weird positions. Like, turns off the light. Nope, and just walks back down the stairs. That's kind of how I feel about this. So yeah, clearly I'm gonna have to serve this. Absolutely. Yeah, and. Uh, if we weren't as late as we were, I would show you how I'm going to make, how I make these. Um, I'm going to go back to the rum one because it's actually tastier. Add a little lemon juice to this because it's a little, a little too sweet for me. Just uh, stir up the brains. Arr. I don't know that that helped it any. <laughs> 
Wow. If anything, the brains, i.e. the um, the liqueur, the, um, what is that stuff? Yeah, this, the Irish cream. If anything, with citrus added, it gets slimier. Oh, wow. Ew. I could add some arrow root to that. That would be cool. No. All right. So now we're just playing around. We're just I messing like around. We're gonna we're gonna cut things. it. We're it gonna won't make it better. It's not gonna make it better. That's not the point. <laughs> the point is not to make it better. It's to make it drinkable. But um, wow, that's that's stop crackling. Oh man. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, this has been fun in three parts. Okay, maybe that's not so much fun. And we'll see you again next week. Hopefully. Uh, there'll be episode 79, uh, 79, I don't know, it doesn't mean anything to me, it's not prime, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, once again, yes, I, I have no sign-off catchphrase, <laughs> it's still crackling, maybe that's the catch, you know, the send-off phrase, it's still crackling, uh, do you hear the crackling, yeah. can, can you still hear the crackling, yeah. all right, um, Next time, I'm probably going to do a drink that involves a praline liqueur, the Nocino, and there was something else. Oh, and Orgeat in it, because um, I want to get multiple nuts in there. And the idea is that it's like going nuts, and we're going to call this a sanity check, right? Because it put, plays into the Call of Cthulhu theme, right? So I'm playing with that in my head. We'll see how that goes. Um, there will be no roses, sweetened lime juice, or fashionola in that cocktail, I promise. Uh, none of that. All right, we're going to sign off um, for the third time, I guess, this evening. Have yourself a good week. Uh, enjoy the holiday if you have it off. If not, have as good a day as you can while the rest of us are enjoying a holiday. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye. <laughs>